Uh, my name is Chris Bannon. I'm the product manager for a component product called Widgmo. So really there's two types of components. Um, there are smart components and then there are presentation components. Uh, that's, that's a nice way of saying dumb components. Um, and the dumb components are the ones I really care about and I think are extremely powerful. So smart components can do things like pull in data from many different data sources, it can analyze data, um, and it can even you know, rearrange and, and call in different presentation components. But uh, let's talk about the presentation components, the dumb components. Um, what, what are those? So essentially, uh, they don't think for themselves. They're really used to present data to, uh, they can manipulate data and send it back, um, but they are not smart enough to uh, aggregate uh, sources together. So they, they need to be fed data. Uh, and fundamentally, they're reusable, and this is the key. So reusable components, um, I focus mainly on UI components, but uh, you can have non-UI components that are reusable. Uh, in fact, there might be more non-UI components uh, that are reusable out in the world. So it, 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 essentially, it's just any little piece of an application that can be shared or reused. And it doesn't matter how it's shared or who it's, who it's shared with, uh, just that it could be reused. Uh, and really, you should be considering you know, every part of your application and wondering, could this be shared? Could this be reused? Uh, because it's just going to help you or other people down the line. Uh, and it should be as dumb as possible. So the smarter you make something, uh, the more uh, problematic it is to be reused. So you want, something needs to be general, and to be general, it needs to be pretty dumb. So some examples of that, uh, buttons, uh, input elements, think like a uh, date picker when you're going to get a flight, something really simple like that, that it, it doesn't understand your flight, where you're going, it doesn't understand anything other than displaying and editing a date. Uh, and then there's more complicated things like a data grid or a chart. So why use or even build reusable components? Uh, fundamentally, it's to save development time and effort. Um, and there's really uh, no like, limit to how much you can share things. I mean, each organization is going to set its own limits, but you, know, you can start by sharing components uh, across screens in a single application. Uh, think of that date picker. You probably have multiple forms in your application where you could use a date picker. Um, you can share it across different applications. So uh, if you have a team building a certain kind of application, they're using a whole set of components. Uh, you have another team. Are they synced up and using the same components? Or are they using different components? Are they building their own? Um, another thing with reusable components is it's going to get you a consistent UI. So when you're all using the same thing, uh, it's going to look alike, it's going to behave alike, uh, it's going to be familiar to end users. And uh, it really allows focus on expertise. So when you're using a component, something that's been shared uh, to you, or maybe you're developing a component, uh, there's a certain amount of expertise that goes into that component. And that expertise, when you need to focus on that, so the dumb component, when you need to spend your time and effort focusing on a dumb component, that's time you could have been spent on the smart component. So by utilizing shared components, you can really uh, focus your efforts on solving business problems, not component problems. Of course, you want to use what's available. There is a ton of stuff available out there. Um, so there's open source UI components. Uh, there's a ton of that uh, that, that works very well. Um, and solves a lot of the most common problems uh, in the UI space. There's also a uh, company's internal shared libraries. This is one of my favorites. So almost every large enterprise we work with has a, at least a component library. Sometimes or often they have a team dedicated to working on that library. 
uh, and that really is going to bring those benefits to every team. Any, any team coming on board building an application has a full set of components that the company's already approved, uh, and they already meet all the requirements for the company, the branding for the company, and it's just it's a very good idea to implement an enterprise. Um, and those are usually comprised of some open source components. They also contain some built in-house components because there's some that just aren't out there. Uh, and then also commercial components. So uh, commercial components are usually the things that uh, developers don't want to spend all that time building on their own, usually a little more complicated like a data grid or a chart. So what makes a good component? Uh, to me, it's a blend of three things. So it's features, it has to have the proper feature to work, it has to solve the problem, uh, it has to be fast, because if it has all the features and it's not fast, it's completely useless. And then it also has to be flexible. Um, when you're working with shared components, it has to be something that works in different scenarios, um, and you, you need to have some kind of extensibility model so people can customize it. To their needs. All right, so if we look at some components out there, uh, open source, uh, some of the most popular UI components are material design for the web um, and bootstrap. So those have uh, a ton of options in them for layout, uh, navigation, lists, inputs, buttons, things that are small, but putting all this together takes a lot of effort. Maintaining it takes a lot of effort. So it makes a lot of sense for a company, company to adopt something like one of these. And then commercial components. So there are a lot of commercial component vendors out there solving these very difficult problems, things like uh, spreadsheets, data grids, um, analytical charts, things that you probably won't find in open source. And you come to a point of decision where you need to either build it yourself and you need to gain that expertise, you need to maintain it, or you go out and you buy something. All right, so let's look at an example of putting everything together. Um, what we did was we took uh, uh, the OpenFin framework, uh, we took Bootstrap, uh, and then we took our library of UI components and we, in about a week and a half, were able to build this application. And the reason we were able to do that so quickly is because everything you're seeing is basically dumb components. I mean, it, it doesn't look dumb, but it is. All the work was just pulling the data source in and feeding these different dumb components uh, and laying the screens out. But OpenFin made that easy, Bootstrap made that easy. Um, so that, that's just a nice demonstration of the power of what you can do very quickly when you're using a, a good set of shared components. Um, so I'd love to talk more components in the back uh, at the booth. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>